ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ما بعد uh, first of all just a reminder for myself and for my brothers uh, you know sometimes people they ask why do we need to read the quran why do we need to read the explanation of the quran uh, the answer is very simple. Uh, the Quran is the word that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you don't understand what your Lord wants from you, there is nothing for you except misguidance. So people who don't read the Quran, who don't know what's in the Quran, will be misguided. And this is a quality of the hypocrites, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran. Quran. Don't they seek the meanings? Of the Quran, don't they seek to understand the Quran? Because most Muslims today they think the Quran is just uh, this great honorable thing that we're gonna put on the shelf, and whenever we see it, we're just gonna make some gesture with our hands or you know bow our head and think that that's enough. This these people would be like as Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, كَمَثَلِ الْحِمَارِ يَحْمِلُ أَسْفَارًا like a donkey who's carrying uh as far are the the the, the torah that allah sent to musa salam. it's also like the example of a donkey who was carrying heavy uh bottles of water and he's dying from thirst he's dying from thirst and he can't even help himself by drinking the water that he's carrying so this is a muslim who does not understand the quran and then some muslims they tell you we start having doubt in in the religion well, if you don't understand the Quran, how can you know the truth from your Lord? So, uh, you know, even though this may seem a small quantity that we do every week, twice a week, but mashallah, we have reached page 96. That's almost one sixth of the Quran. And as the Prophet Sallallahu said, uh, the best deeds that are beloved to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala are the ones that are continuous, even if they are small. Even if they are small, but as long as they are continuous, it is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, you know, time goes, goes on and, you know, we sleep and we wake up and we go on our daily lives. So, you know, to add one or two pages a week to our, uh, to our understanding of the Quran is not much compared to, however, uh, compared to how much time we, we waste on the worldly matters. Yet the benefit is, is immense. So I'm just sharing this thought with, with you know, for myself, for my brothers, because sometimes a person, you know, after a while, shaitan is going to come to him and ask him, well, what's one page? You know, it's nothing. It's, but actually, it means a lot after a while. So we continue here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاسْتَغْفِرِ اللَّهَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا Now, the English version of Ibn Kathir skips uh, uh, certain parts in this, in this uh, page. But I will. Uh, but I took it from the Arabic translation, and I will try to to to, to uh, translate it. Inshallah. Wastaghfirillah. Inna Allah kana afur rahim. Allah tells the Prophet Sallam, ask Allah for forgiveness. Allah is uh, oft forgiven. Obviously, uh, it's uh, it, the Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is telling the Prophet Sallam to ask Allah for forgiveness. But of course, the command is general to all the Muslims. The reason for the revelation of these verses. Is that Ibn Mardawi, uh, Ibn Mardawiya, uh, narrated on the author of Ibn Abbas said, there were some uh, people from the Ansar who went to battle with the Prophet ﷺ, uh, in some of his uh, battles, and one of them lost his shield. So someone stole the shield of one of these Ansar. So they thought that one. Another person from the Ansar was the one who stole it. So the the uh, the owner of this shield came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, "Tu'ma bin Ubayriq, Tu'ma bin Ubayriq stole my shield." So Tu'ma bin Ubayriq was also an Ansari. So this Tu'ma bin Ubayriq, when uh, he saw that. He was going to get caught. He took the shield and he threw it in the house of another person uh, named Labid. 
And this person, Tu'ma bin Ubayriq, now obviously this person is a hypocrite, but of course he was living in Medina and he was considered, uh, you know, uh, from among the Muslims, but in reality he was a, he was a hypocrite. So this Tu'ma bin Ubayriq stole the shield. And after he saw that he was going to get caught, he took the shield and he threw it in the house of another person named Labid. And this Tu'ma bin Ubayriq told some of his uh, family members, he told them the truth. He said, look, I stole a shield and I threw it in the house of such and such person, in the house of Labid. And, and it is in his house. So let's go to the Prophet وسلم, and tell him that, uh, that, I am free, that I am innocent. Uh, and that the person who actually stole the, uh, the shield uh, is, is Labid. And we knew that. So this person, is hypocrite, took his family members in his tribe, and then he told them, let's go and lie to the Prophet وسلم, and accuse someone else uh, of the fact that he stole the shield. So his family members went to the Prophet وسلم, and they said, oh Prophet, uh, you know, our family member, Tu'ma bin Ubayriq, is, is innocent. And the person who actually stole the shield uh, is Fulan, that means Labid. And we knew about that. So uh, we want you to uh, talk to the people of Medina and tell them that, that Tu'ma bin Ubayriq is, is innocent. He's not the one that, uh, that stole the shield. And Jadil uh, An and argue on his behalf. So now the family of Tamil Ubayri are the Prophet to argue on his behalf. That's why Allah Subhanahu wa says in the statement, "Famanu Jadilu." Who's going to argue against Allah for these hypocrites on the day of judgment? So these uh, family members of Tamil Ubayri told the Prophet to argue, uh, to argue about him and defend him in front of people, uh, because no one is gonna uh, is gonna uh, save him from his hand being cut off except you, O Prophet. So the Prophet ﷺ, uh, went up and, and he uh, told the people of Medina that Tu'am al is innocent. And, you know, basically he said that, you know, he was not the one that stole the shield. Because the Prophet ﷺ, as we said before, is only a human being. He only knows of the unseen, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals to him. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not reveal to him that this person is innocent or not innocent, then the Prophet ﷺ would only judge outwardly uh, the same way that any other human being would so the prophet ﷺ believed these people because obviously there was no proof that this Tamar Ubayriq did steal uh, this shield and he told the people that Tamar Ubayriq was was innocent at that point Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this verse uh, telling the prophet ﷺ about what really happened and Allah said we have revealed to you the book in truth so that you may judge between men with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows you and don't argue on behalf of the, uh, the betrayers, the ones that betray, those that betray, betray the trust, betray your trust and betray other Muslims. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him uh, to judge uh, in truth. Also, uh, another narration, in another narration says that uh, a person named Qatada radiallahu anh, came to the Prophet وسلم, and told him that Tu'ma bin Ubayriq stole the shield of, of his uncle, of the uncle of Qatada. So the Prophet وسلم, told him, O oh, Qatada, do you accuse this person without any proof? You should not have done that. So Qatada radiallahu anh, felt very bad uh, about that and he said, I thought that I, I wish that I, that I lost all of my money and not have heard that from the Prophet وسلم. The Prophet وسلم, rebuking me, telling me that I accused someone without, uh, without, a, uh, without proof. So Qatada went back to his uncle. His uncle told him what happened. Qatada told him what happened. That, you know, the Prophet ﷺ said that, you know, we should not accuse this person if we don't have proof. So his uncle said, Allah al-Musta'an. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah al-Musta'an, that means uh, only Allah will help us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped them and revealed this verse. 
and inform the Prophet وسلم, that these people are hypocrites and that this is the plot that they plotted and it was Tamar bin Ubayriq that actually stole the uh, the shield and when Tamar bin Ubayriq knew that he was going to get caught then he ran away and he joined the mushriks in Mecca because obviously a hypocrite is a disbeliever at heart even though he's a liar and he shows outwardly that he is that he is a Muslim. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Ask Allah for forgiveness. Allah is oft forgiven. Uh, the scholar said, uh, ask, ask Allah forgiveness for what you have said to Qatada. Because of course Qatada was telling the truth. But he did not have any point, any, any proof. And he felt bad because of what the Prophet told, told him. The Prophet did not say anything bad. He just told him, you know, how can you accuse someone without proof? It's not, you know, it's, this is a logical thing to say. And yet Qatada felt very bad because those people loved Allah, loved his measure so much. And, you know, as he said, you know, I wish that I lost all of my money, money and would not have heard this rebuke from the Prophet Sallallahu their, their love for Allah and his messenger was true and it was pure, unlike uh, the generations that followed them. So this was the reason of the... Uh, Revelation uh, of this ayah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاسْتَغْفِرِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا وَلَا تُجَادِلْ عَنِ الَّذِينَ يَخْتَنُونَ أَنفُسَهُمْ Don't argue on behalf of the ones that betray the trust. That's uh, the person that uh, stole the uh, the shield, Ta'ub bin Ubayriq. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ مَنْ كَانَ خَوَّنًا أَثِيمًا Surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love the ones that betray the trust and commit uh, sins. Then here we go back to Tafsir Kathir. Then Allah's statement says, "Yastakhfuna min al-nas, wa la yastakhfuna min Allah." They may hide their crimes from men. That means this crime of stealing the shield. They may hide it from men, but they cannot hide them from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So they can, they can hide it from men, but they cannot hide it from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So here Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is referring to. Uh, the theft of the shield. Here, Allah says that they may hide their crimes from men, but they cannot hide them from Allah. This chest, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chastised the hypocrites because they hid, they hide their evil works, their evil deeds from the people so that they would not criticize them. You know, similarly, we have some wives that hide the, their, their betrayal of their husbands from their husbands while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching their evil deeds. Some children, they hide their evil deeds from their parents. I mean, we give advice to these brothers and sisters and these kids. Fear Allah. Don't, don't fear people. Fear Allah first. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking at you, how dare you commit this disobedience and uh, be afraid of people to chastise you and not be afraid from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to punish you. So this is one of the traits of the hypocrites. that They hide their evil works from the people so that they would not criticize them, yet the hypocrites disclose this evil that they're doing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has perfect watch over their secrets and knows what is in their hearts. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَهُوَ مَعَهُمْ إِذْ يُبَيِّتُونَ مَا لَا يَرْضَى مِنَ الْقَوْلِ Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with them with His knowledge when they plot by night in words those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not approve of. And Allah subhanahu so they say some things that this please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, they don't say it to people because they don't want to be criticized by them, but they say it in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah ever encompasses what they do. This is a threat and a warning to these hypocrites that do these type of, of actions. These types of actions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then said, ha antum ha anhum fil dunya. Lo, you are those who have argued for them in this life. Meaning, suppose these people gain the verdict from the rulers in their favor, like this person that stole the shield, Tu'ma bin Ubayriq. He gained the verdict of the Prophet ﷺ at first in his favor, in this life, because the rulers judge according to what is apparent to them, right? They don't know the unseen. However, what will their condition be on the day of resurrection before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who knows the secret and what is even more hidden? So Allah knows what is even more hidden and knows all the secret. Who will be their lawyer? Who will advocate on their behalf on that day? Verily, none will support them on that day. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, أَمَّنْ يَكُونُ عَلَيْهِمْ وَكِيلًا Who will then be their defender? So the Prophet ﷺ defended uh, uh, Tu'ma bin Ubayriq 
because uh, Qatada radiallahu anhu did not have proof that Tu'm bin Ubayriq uh, did steal the, the shield. That's why he argued on his behalf. But who's going to argue on behalf of Tu'm bin Ubayriq on the Day of Judgment? No one, obviously. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is not the small section that's not here. Ha'antum ha'ula ijadaltum anhum fil hayati dunya fama yujadilullah Allah fama yujadilullah anhum yawma al-qiyamati amma yakunu alayhim wakila. Now we already saw this section. Next, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wama yamal su'an aw yadhlim nafsahu thumma yastaghfir illah yajid illah ghafur rahima wama yaksib ithman fa'inna ma yaksibuhu ala nafsih وكان الله عليما حكيما ومن يكسب خطيئة أو إثما ثم يرم به بريئا فقد احتمل فقد احتمل بهتانا وإثما مبينا ولولا فضل الله عليك ورحمته لهم الطائفة منهم أن يضلوك وما يضلون إلا أنفسهم وَمَا يَضُرُّونَكَ مِنْ شَيْءٍ وَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَعَلَّمَكَ مَا لَمْ تَكُنْ تَعْلَمْ وَكَانَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكَ عَظِيمًا So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here says Whomsoever does evil or wrongs himself but afterwards seeks Allah's forgiveness then this person would find Allah oft forgiven, most merciful. And whomever earns a sin, he earns it only against himself. And Allah is ever all-knowing, all-wise. And whomever earns a fault or a sin, and then blames it on someone who's innocent, then he has indeed burdened himself with falsehood and a manifest sin. This is like uh, Tu'ma bin Ubayriq. He, he blamed the theft on uh, Labid al-Ansari, who was uh, innocent. Had not the grace of Allah and His mercy been upon you, a party of them would certainly have made a decision to mislead you. So that's the, the party are the, uh, the family and tribe members of Ubayriq, of Tu'ma bin Ubayriq, uh, you know, his family members. They almost misled the Prophet ﷺ into thinking that it was Labid that stole the shield. But they mislead none except their own selves. So see, they, they mislead none except their own selves. And no harm can they do to you in the least. Allah has sent down to you the book and the hikmah. Hikmah here is the sunnah. So here, those that reject the sunnah, it's in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed the Quran and the sunnah. And taught you that which you knew not. And ever great is the grace of Allah unto you. The next section is titled, The Encouragement to Seek Allah's Forgiveness and Warning Those who falsely accuse innocent people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizes his generosity and kindness. Now someone may ask, well, how did uh, Qatada know that it was the family of Ubayriq that stole uh, the shield? In another, in another hadith, it said that, uh, basically, it was another narration uh, where they said that there were some people that came from Asham and then they... Uh, the uncle of Qatada bought some food from them. <clears throat> so he kept the food and the shield in, in a spot. And this family of Tu'ma bin Ubayriq were very poor. And all they, they ate was dates and barley. <clears throat> but on the night when the shield and the food was stolen, fire was seen in their house. So they were cooking something. And these people were very poor and did not have money to buy food to cook. So obviously, it was an indication that it is them that stole the food from, uh, from the uncle of Qatada, radiallahu anha. So, you know, someone may ask, well, how did they know it was them? There were some qara'in, there were some, some, uh, some indications. <clears throat> Allah emphasizes his generosity and kindness in that he forgives whomever repents to him from whatever evil they commit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ سُؤَنْ أَوْ يَظْلِمْ نَفْسَهُ and whomever does evil or wrongs himself but afterwards seeks Allah's forgiveness, he will find Allah of forgiven most merciful. <coughs> Ali ibn Abi Talha said that Ibn Abbas commented about this ayah 
Allah informs his servants of his forgiveness, forbearing, generosity, and expansive mercy. So whomever commits a sin, whether minor or major, and he seeks Allah's forgiveness, then <coughs> whether minor or major, but afterwards seeks Allah's forgiveness, he will find Allah oft forgiven, most merciful, even if his sins were greater than the heavens, the earth, and the mountains. Because as Allah says in another verse, uh, those that repent, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changes their evil deeds into hasanat. So not only does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive the evil deeds, but he changes them into, uh, uh, into rewards. <clears throat> but don't let someone think, oh, let me go and commit so many evil deeds, then after that I'm going to repent, I'm going to have so many hasanat. Uh, don't play with the religion because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the same way you are plotting evil, Allah can plot against you and you will not be able to repent. So a person should always uh, take these instructions that Allah changes sins into hasanat as glad tidings to the person so the person does not lose hope from Allah's mercy because even if a person uh, you know whatever a person does he's going to commit sins uh, uh, you know in, in whatsoever because as the Prophet said Kul bani kha- Adam khata. all the son of Adam commits mistakes so <clears throat> don't let the son of Adam try to play with the religion and say, let me disobey Allah and later on I will repent, like most Muslims say, after I, uh, you know, I'm going to take bribery, I'm going to commit so much evil, and then after I reach the age of 60 and I uh, get my retirement, then I'm going to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not obvious that Allah will allow you or enable you to make this repentance. Imam Ahmad recorded that Ali said, Ali ibn Abi Talib said, whenever I hear anything from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah benefits me with whatever he wills of that. Abu Bakr told me, so Ali said, Abu Bakr told me, so why do the Shia say that, you know, Ali and Abu Bakr have, uh, you know, uh, uh, bad relationship, etc. No, Ali was, was a companion, so was Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr was higher in status than Ali Abu Bakr was the first man to accept Islam. Ali was the first child to accept Islam and they were all companions and at their time the companions are the ones that decided who was going to succeed the Prophet وسلم, and after Abu Bakr they decide who's going to succeed him and so on and so forth until Ali uh, became Khalifa and actually uh, to answer the Shia we will only tell them what Ali عنه, uh, said to one of the Khawarij that came to him and said oh Ali how come uh, there was no fitna between the Muslims during the reign of Abu Bakr and Umar and there was so much fitna and bloodshed and the urine. So Ali radiallahu anhu, the, the, the blessed companion of the Prophet وسلم, the cousin of the companion وسلم, and also the, uh, the husband of Fatima radiallahu anha, the father of al Hussein al Hassan al Hussein, Sayyidah uh, Shabab Ahl Jannah radiallahu anha, this, this great companion answered this Khariji and we answer the, the Shia with the same answer that Ali radiallahu anha answered them. Ali told him, he said, my like, you know, the people like me, I don't know he's speaking, the people like me were the men that were under Abu Bakr and Umar. Under Abu Bakr and Umar, the people that they ruled were men like me, like Ali radiallahu anhu, pious people, people obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. While the people that are under me are people like you, who are khawarij, who cause fitna between the Muslims, who make, commit bloodshed. So the fault is not with Ali radiallahu anh, it is with the khawarij that were with him, it is with the people that follow their vain desires, it is with the people that try to cause fitna in the religion so that they can push people away from the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make them busy with bloodshed and nonsense talk. So Ali radiallahu anh answered this khawarij, he said, the men that were under Abu Bakr and, and Umar are the men like me. And the men that are under me are the men like you, O Khariji. So the people that caused fitna are the ones that were under Ali, radiallahu an, and they are the ones that called uh, that caused uh, evil and fitna among the Muslims. It is not the fault of Ali, radiallahu an. So Ali, radiallahu an, said, Abu Bakr told me, and Abu Bakr has said the truth. Okay, so this is Ali, radiallahu an, speaking. Abu Bakr told me, Abu Bakr has said the truth, that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa said, and by the way, you're not going to find anything in the Sunnah where Ali, radiallahu an, is speaking ill, about Abu Bakr or about Umar, or where Umar Abu Bakr was speaking ill about Ali. Not only that, but they actually married each, uh, you know, uh, you know, some, some of them's daughters were married to the others. So they actually were brothers in Islam, and there was no, no rancor uh, uh, between them, among them. 
So Abu Bakr told me, and Abu Bakr has said the truth that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Na min Muslimin yuzinibu dhanban, thumma yatawadda fa yusalli rakatain, thumma yastaghfiru Allah li dhalik dhanb illa ghafar lah, illa ghafar lah." No Muslim commits a sin and then performs ablution, wudu, prays two rakat and begs Allah for forgiveness for that sin, except Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will forgive him. Ali radhiyallahu anhu then recited these two ayah: "Wa may yamal su'an aw yadlim nafsahu." And whomever does evil or wrongs himself, and also another ayah that that is similar in meaning. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ. So uh, Ali radhiyallahu anhu said that any Muslim that commits a sin and then performs ablution, prays to rakah and begs Allah forgiveness for that sin, Allah subhanahu wa taala will forgive him. Allah's statement: وَمَنْ يَكْسِبْ إِثْمًا فَإِنَّمَا يَكْسِبُهُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ. And whomever earns a sin. He earns it only against himself. That means if a person commits a sin, he is the one who's going to be punished for it, not someone else. And this is similar to Allah's statement: "Wala tazir wa ziratun wizra ukhra," and no bearer of burdens shall bear the burden of another. So no one will avail anyone else on the day of judgment. Rather, every soul and none else shall carry its own burden. "La tazir wa ziratun wizra ukhra." So any every person will carry the burden of his own sins on the day of judgment. This is what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says. وكان الله عليما حكيما أن الله سبحانه وتعالى is ever all knowing all wise meaning this occurs due to Allah's knowledge wisdom fairness and mercy that a person when he commits a sin only he is punished with that sin next Allah سبحانه وتعالى says وعلمك okay so here another section is is skipped but it's actually you know Allah سبحانه وتعالى says وَمَنْ يَكْسِبْ خَطِيئَةً أَوْ إِثْمًا ثُمَّ يَرْمِي بِهِ بَرِيئًا فَقَدْ إِحْتَمَلَ بُهْتَانًا وَإِثْمًا مُبِينًا And whomever uh, does evil or commits a sin and then uh, blames it on an innocent person, then he has, uh, he has borne a very heavy burden. Just like the story of... Uh, just uh, like the story of... Uh, What's his name? The uh, the hypocrite, Tu'ma bin Ubayriq. Just like the story of Tu'ma bin Ubayriq, where that you know he stole the 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 shield. It was his fault, his sin, and then he he blamed uh, Labid uh, for it. So he blamed Labid for it. Okay. So, uh, so whomever does that commits a sin and then blames someone else who is who is innocent, then surely he has uh, undertaken a heavy burden and a big sin. And then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Wala ula fadu Allahi alayka wa rahmatuhu laham ma taifatu minhum ayyudilluk." Had it not been for the bounty of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and His mercy, a party from among them would have misled you. So Allah here is referring to the family. Of of Tu'ma bin Ubayriq, you know the family of Tu'ma bin Ubayriq when they came to the Prophet Sallam and told him, you know our our family member is innocent, etc. etc. So they almost uh, misguided the Prophet Sallam in in uh, judging with the truth. Allah says, "Wa ma yadruna illa anfusahum." Surely they will only misguide themselves. Wa ma yadruna kimi shay. No harm will they do to you. Wa anzal Allahu alayka al kitab wa al hikma. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has revealed to you. Uh, the book, the Quran, and Hikmah, the Sunnah, وَعَلَّمَكَ مَا لَمْ تَكُنْ تَعْلَمْ and taught you that which you knew not before, before this revelation was sent down to you. Uh, obviously, because the Quran uh, has so many, so many, so much news of the past, of the future, uh, so many rulings, and the Prophet ﷺ did not know all these things before Allah Subhanahu wa Taala revealed uh, this Quran to him. The same way Allah says Subhanahu wa Taala about the Quran somewhere else. وكذلك أوحينا إليك روحا من أمرنا ما كنت تدري ما الكتاب. And thus we have sent to you, O Muhammad, a ruh. A ruh here is Allah is calling the Quran a ruh, which is revelation and mercy of our command. Now some Sufis they take this ayah and they said that oh. Uh, you know, it's ruh. They have the, the Sufis have this obsession with this word ruh, ruh, because ruh is something that Allah says that no one knows the truth about the soul, the ruh. So the Sufis they go to this thing where Allah does not know anything about, and then they start using it in their misguidances. The, the shayateen that serve them when they commit evil and they do magic, they call them those are ruh that Allah has 
created for us, and then they say the Quran is a ruh, and you know they they they, mis- they, they confuse people. You know, we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to to keep us on a straight path because when you see all these all these people that are misguided in the world, Wallahi, you should we, we should thank Allah Subhanahu wa Taala great, greatly for His mercy that not only did He make us Muslims, but He He selected us to me um, among the Muslims that are following. The truth, the pure truth, the the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the companions, because that is the only path that will save a person from a hellfire, as Allah subhanahu wa taala says. And actually, this ayah that I'm gonna uh, recite in Surah Al Imran was also revealed uh, according to uh, to some scholars because of what happened here, because of the story that we said about uh, you know the shield being stolen. Allah subhanahu wa taala says. وَمَن يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى وَيَتَّبِعَ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى وَنُصْلِهِ جَهَنَّمَ وَسَاءَتْ مَصِيرًا So when uh, when this person that stole the shield Tu'ma bin Ubayriq basically when, when he was caught and you know basically when his, his matter was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thought he was going to get caught he ran away and he he went to the mushriks. He joined the mushriks. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah. And whomever disputes with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and follows a path other than that of the believers, the believers are the companions and those that followed them in their, in their way of, of, uh, of practicing the religion, then we, ha- we will keep him in whatever path of misguidance he has chosen and we shall send him to hellfire, and as Sheikh Saleh Al Fawzan Hafizahullah says, that don't think that all the Muslims today are on the true Islam that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has revealed, and don't think that all of them will go to Jannah just because they claim that they are Muslims. No, uh, the Muslims that will go to Jannah without any punishment are the ones that are following the path of the Prophet Sallallahu and the companions, so long that they avoid the other sins that require punishment in the hellfire. Uh, as the Prophet Sallallahu said, this Ummah, this, uh, you know, the, okay, first the Jews, they were divided into 71 sects, 70 sects are in fire, and one sect was in, the, in Jannah, that's before at the time of Musa Alayhi Salam and the Prophets after him until Isa Alayhi Salam, and then after Isa Alayhi Salam came, the Prophet Sallallahu said that the Christians were divided into 72 sects, 71 of them in hellfire, and one of them is in Jannah, and that was valid until Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came, which means because every time a prophet comes, then it, it, the religion of that prophet abrogates the religions before him. So after Isa alayhi salam, Judaism will no longer be accepted as a true religion. After Muhammad alayhi salatu salam, Christianity will no longer be accepted as the true religion. But of course, as we said, even them, they had 72 sects. All of them uh, are in a hellfire except one. And obviously we do we know that there, were, there was a sect among the Christians that believed that Isa alayhi salam is only a prophet, he's not God or son of God, and they did not join anything in worship uh, with, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So perchance those are the saved ones, but that's before Muhammad alayhi salatu salam came, because if they truly followed Isa alayhi salam, then they would ultimately follow Muhammad alayhi salatu salam, because Muhammad alayhi salatu salam came with whatever uh, message Allah sent him with, uh, uh, believing in the messages uh, that came before him. Uh, of the other prophets, his his brothers uh, in the religion, uh, Isa and Musa alayhi salam, and the other prophets. So uh, the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, tawalla. So, uh, so we said that the Jews were divided into 71 sects, uh, all of them in the fire except one, until of course the time of Isa alayhi salam. After that, anyone who did not believe in Isa will go to hellfire. And then after Isa alayhi salam came, the Christians were divided into 72 sects, all of whom are in hellfire except one. Until Muhammad came, at that, at that stage, only Islam will be accepted. And even the Muslims uh, are, were divided or will be divided or have been divided into 73 sects, all of whom are in the hellfire except one. And then the Prophet was asked, who is this one saved sect of Prophet Al-Firqa Najiya? The Prophet said, Al-Jama'ah in one hadith, Al-Jama'ah means the majority of the companions, the majority of the scholars. And in another hadith, he explains this word Jama'ah because some people, they may hear Jama'ah and they say, oh, that means we have one and a half billion Muslims. We see what the majority of these Muslims are following. No, they're wrong. This is not the meaning of the Jama'ah. The Jama'ah is not the, lay, the, 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 the layman's among the Muslims, it is the scholars. The scholars that are on the truth. The Prophet ﷺ explained this hadith in another hadith when he said, Ma'ana alayhi wa ashabi. 
the path that I am following me and my companions. So the Prophet ﷺ didn't say only me, he said my companions. That means the religion according to the understanding of the companions. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, وَيَتَّبِعْ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَمَنْ يُشَاقِ الرَّسُولِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيْنَ هُدَى وَيَتَبِعْ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not only speak about uh, this period with the Prophet ﷺ, he also added another condition. is following a path other than that of the believers. Uh, if whomever does this, then Allah will set him in whatever uh, misguided path that this person has chosen and that will lead him to the hellfire. So the only path that will lead to Jannah for the Muslims is the path of the Prophet ﷺ and his companions. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa says, and thus we have sent to you Muhammad, a ruh meaning a revelation and a mercy of our command. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala also uh, called Jibreel alayhi salam a ruh. A ruh, you know, some scholars said that's something that brings back life to your soul because, you know, when we eat food, your body remains alive. But when we read Quran, read the explanation, we read the sunnah, your soul becomes alive. So you don't lose your faith. So this is one of the meanings why Allah called it ruh. It is nourishment for the soul. وَكَانَ فَضُّ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكَ عَظِيمًا Until the end of the surah, Allah says, وَمَا كُنَ تَرْجُوا أَنْ يُقَعِ إِلَكِ الْكِتَابِ إِلَىٰ رَحْمَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكَ This is another verse. And you were not expecting that the book, this Qur'an, would be sent down to you, but it is only a mercy from your Lord. Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكَانَ فَضُّ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكَ عَظِيمًا And ever great is the grace of Allah unto you, O Muhammad, alayhi salatu salam. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit us with the correct knowledge, we, to enable us to read the Qur'an and understand its meanings. So that we can get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so we can draw closer to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gather us with Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu salam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our families, our children, uh, and our provision. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us away from harm's way. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us away from all fitna. Wa da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. If you have any questions, uh, brothers, then you can go ahead and ask. Is there a 